Hello. This lecture is about finite wings, or the impact of what happens at the wingtips on the entire flow field around the wing. Up to now, we have looked at two-dimensional objects. So, in the case of airfoils, constant cord, infinitely long wings. However, a wing of an aircraft is finite. Since we generally have a high pressure at the lower surface and a lower pressure at the suction side of the wing, air is leaking, so to speak, around the wing tip, from the pressure side to the suction side, forming a tip vortex. The next video shows an experiment in which this tip vortex is made visible. It is an aircraft in the landing phase. It flies over the smoke installation and after some time, the right wingtip vortex is nicely visible. The strength of this tip vortex must not be underestimated. Especially in the landing of a big aircraft, it can be very strong and long-lasting. If a much smaller aircraft would get caught in this rotating flow, it could easily flip over and crash. The vortices from the tips also result in induced velocities pointing downwards along the entire wingspan. And this is what we call downwash. The effect of this downwash is that locally at the wing, the velocity vector deviates from the free stream direction. Now imagine we have a wing with the cord line having a geometric angle alpha towards the incoming free stream flow. The lift force due to this angle of attack is L1. And by definition, it is perpendicular to the free stream velocity vector, so straight up. This would be the situation if the wing would be infinitely long. Now we have a finite wing, and due to the tip vortices, a downwash or an induced velocity W exists, which changes the local velocity vector at the wing so that it makes an angle alpha i, or the induced angle with the free stream as shown here on the bottom of the slide. The result is that the airfoil in the wing doesn't see the flow coming in under the geometric angle, but under a smaller angle, alpha minus alpha i, called the effective angle. As a result, a lift vector L points in another direction, so that it is now perpendicular to the incoming flow vector, which makes an angle alpha effective relative to the chord line. If we take a look at this lift vector, we see that it has a component in the direction of the free stream velocity. So in fact, this is a drag component called the induced drag di. We can write di is L times the sine of alpha i. For small angles, alpha i, this may be written as d is L times alpha i. The angle alpha i is expressed in radians. From incompressible flow theory, a number of things can be derived for this situation. If the lift distribution along the wing is elliptical, as is shown here, the downwash along the entire wing is constant. The induced angle in this situation can be written as alpha i is Cl divided by pi times the aspect ratio A, which is given as the wingspan squared over the wing area. Since we found that the i is L times alpha i, we may write CDI is CL times alpha i. With the expression for the induced angle, we find CDI is CL squared divided by pi a. To get this elliptic loading on the wing, we can give the wing an elliptic plan form. When the airfoils in the wing all produce the same lift coefficients, the elliptic lift distribution can be realized by the change in chord along the span. And when we have a different plan form of the wing, we can introduce twist. By varying the angle of attack of the airfoils in the wing along the span, the resulting lift coefficient distribution, together with the chord distribution, can give an approximation of the elliptic load distribution. For practical situations, the induced drag coefficient is given by CL squared divided by pi a e1. And e1 is called the span efficiency factor. When E1 is 1, we have the elliptical load distribution, which gives the minimum induced drag. In all other cases, E1 is smaller than 1, and consequently, the induced drag is higher. The total drag of a wing is given by the profile drag plus the induced drag. Note the capitals D and L for the wing, and the small d to denote airfoil properties. The aspect ratio A has a big influence on the total drag of a wing. 
You can imagine that when the aspect ratio is high, for instance for a glider, and the wing comes closer to a two-dimensional situation, the drag will be smaller than for a low aspect ratio wing. This concludes our lecture of the impact of tip vortices of the flow around the wing. We have seen the influence on the drag. The next lecture will treat the effect on the lift curve of a wing.